Hi, I'm Steve Canton, producer of the Beanie Lover video, and your host of this important video, How to Spot Counterfeit Beanie Babies. We touched on this subject in the Beanie Lover video, and were so overwhelmed with the demand for more information that we searched out and found the leading experts on Beanie Babies and counterfeits. With us today are two of the world-renowned authorities on all things Beanie. They are the authors and publishers of the highly acclaimed Beanie Mania, a comprehensive collector's guide. Their weekly market analysis and pricing guide appears on the popular Beanie Mom website and is widely considered to be the most authoritative secondary market price guide and is relied upon by Beanie Baby collectors around the world. They have been featured in numerous publications and magazines as well as on countless TV and radio talk shows across the country. I'm proud to have them join with us today. Please welcome Becky Phillips and Becky Essensaro. It's good to be here. Hi, nice to meet you. It's great to have you here too. Also with us today is the leading expert on oddities, mistags, and counterfeit beanies. She is the feature writer for the Beanie Mom website, primary writer for the Beanie Collector magazine, a contributing author to the Beanie Mania book, co-author of the bi-monthly Beanie Mania bulletin, and a contributor to the Auction Universe and Delphi Collectibles forum internet sites. Since the beginning, she has been at the front line of the conversations on counterfeits, and through her websites, shows, and seminars, she answers 18,000 inquiries a year. Please welcome Vicki Krupka. Hello, Steve. Thank you. Hi. I'm glad to be here today. You know, I'm a collector, and I have a lot of fun collecting. I collect with my son, and I've also sold beanies, made a little money. I'm very concerned about this subject, and I have a lot of questions for you today. One of the questions I want to start with is the history of counterfeits. How did, how did it all start? Well, it started in the summer of 1997, and the first three counterfeits that came out of the market were Old Face Teal, Violet, and Spot Without a Spot. We had collectors who called us. They had just purchased some Beanie Babies from a woman in California who said that she had a box full of old, ta uh, old face, teal, violet, and spot that she found in a back room. Well, you don't normally find large boxes of these older retired. So they, we asked them to send us some, so they did. Um, the first thing that we noticed when we opened the box was the material. You can see that the material on the fake counterfeit beanies um, are not as plush as the regular Beanie Babies are. Um, the other thing we noticed were the eyes. The eyes are a lot, they're duller. Uh, the nose protrudes more on the face. And you'll also notice that when you check the back of the stem, it's a lot shorter. Um, the other thing we noticed was the tag. The tags were shorter, and there was also a lot of punctuation mistakes inside the tag. Again, you have to realize that not only was the Beanie Baby counterfeit, but so was the tag. About three months later, again popped on the market uh, the Royal Blue Peanut and Chili. What does the Royal Blue Peanut sell for right now? It sells for about $5,000. And Chili? Chili sells for between uh, $2,000 and $2,400. That's a big reason to uh, be concerned here about uh, counterfeit beanies. Right. These are um, some of the, the counterfeit beanies are on the high price end. So you have to be very careful and know your beanies and educate yourself on these uh, beanies, what is counterfeit and what is not counterfeit because you are spending a lot of money for a collection. So they started, it looks like, with the more expensive beanies, but I noticed that we have some on the table here. What's going on with the counterfeits right now? What's currently In going on? In October of 1997, um, there was an article about Beijing having uh, beanie babies on the silk market out there. Uh, seconds of beanie babies started appearing. These are not counterfeits, these are seconds of beanie babies. Uh, the the counterfeits started appearing after October of 1997, which would be bubbles and grunt. These, these particular fakes started showing up October, November of 1997. So we kind of had a first wave, a second wave, and a third wave of beanies, starting with the very high end, and then they slowly worked down to a lower end of retired beanies. I see, and how big is this wave? Very big. Right now, it is to the point where um, it's not just older retired Beanie Babies, it's not just retired Beanie Babies, it's not even confined to just hard to find beanies. Uh, you can have brand new current Beanie Babies uh, that are counterfeited within a month of being released by Thai. On the market right now, um, in Beijing, you can buy anywhere from Peking, Righty, Princess, Aaron, uh, Maple Liberty. It runs the whole gamut of current to old 
hard to find, easy to find. I see. Anything. And and are Thai Beanie Babies available in China? They're supposed to be, or? Thai Beanie Babies have never been available in China. It's never been a source. We could go into a store in China and find an original Thai Beanie Baby. They really? have never been sold there. So therefore, if someone tells you that they have purchased this in China, it is a counterfeit. Well, why should we care? Why should we care as collectors? What is the, the big deal? Why should we care about counterfeit beanies? Well, if you think about this collection, um, people are collecting them, and they're very expensive. A complete collection of Beanie Babies could go as high as $100,000. So if this is an invest investment for you, you want to make sure you have a real Thai Beanie Baby. I think that's true. I mean, even if it's just an inexpensive Beanie Baby, I want an authentic Thai Beanie right, Baby. Right, because uh, because of the retirements and introductions of Beanie Babies, the price of um, a current Beanie Baby, its value can go up. The potential investment value could be very good. Can you Maybe give not some as high. Examples uh, of that. Uh, for the October first, nineteen ninety-seven retireds, um, Seymour was one of them. He's up to about one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars right now, and he was a five-dollar beanie. Uh, the New Face Brown Teddy is up to about $100 right now. New Face Brown Teddy is already up to $100. Close to $100. That's great. Or even 1997 Teddy, which has not gone up in value as much as, it, it has a lot of potential. Its potential is very high because it was not on the market that long. There are a lot of counterfeit 97 Teddies out there, so people need to know what they're buying, if it's they're going to buy a real or a fake. So it's a good reason to get educated. Mm -hmm. So how do we get educated? I mean, what's the, what's, let's go over some points here. What is the, what, what is the most important point that you think we need to know? Well, I think you have to know, of course, which ones are uh, Thai Beanie Babies and which ones are counterfeit. Um, and I think that you need to get yourself educated by going to the shows. And if you're afraid to go to the shows by yourself because you might get intimidated by a dealer, bring a friend, someone who possibly has a collection of Beanie Babies that can bring you along because I think you feel safer when you have a friend along. And to make sure that you deal with reputable dealers, those are the people, if you're not satisfied with your product, they will return it. They will take it back and give you back your money. Also, um, getting yourself educated by um, subscribing to certain publications. There's weekly publications out there. There's magazines. There's um, books that are on the market right now that can tell you all the information about tags and twist tags, what the beanies look like, descriptions on them. They're very informative publications out there on the market now. Any examples? Uh, well, we have a, a Beanie Mania magazine that, that is coming out uh, this summer of 98. It's going to be very informative. It will always have a section on counterfeits. You will always be able to find out what's hot and what's not in, uh, in, on the counterfeit trails. And Vicki, uh, on your, uh, your um, column, we could call it a column, with mm -hmm. the uh, Beanie Mom website, mm -hmm. um, is that something you're going to be always updating, right? Yes. Um, as I find out new information about counterfeit Beanie Babies, I post um, factual information about comparisons between the, the counterfeit and the authentic Thai Beanies. I tell people what they can look for, and I update that as soon as I know new information about Beanie Baby about counterfeits. So uh, the Beanie Mom website is also a very good place to to find out information. Plus, I'm always accessible there through the internet. Um, anybody of the wants to email me there. Well, if we had to um, kind of designate the ways that we can figure out how to spot counterfeit beanies, what different things would we uh, would well, we some of the main focus things, on. Some of the main things you would be able to tell is uh, the fabric on the beanie itself. When you go against on a fake or counterfeit beanie baby, when you go against the nap, it's very rough and it's very bumpy. On the authentic beanie baby, it, the, the plush is very smooth. It's very smooth going backwards and forward. Also on the real beanie baby, there is a shine or a shimmer to it. So that would be the material. The material itself is very is very obvious. It's more of a flannel type of a material. Okay, so we have material. You have to need to know about materials. I think another thing is the eyes. If you notice on the old uh, face uh, teal, the eyes are dull, and um, also the ones on the original ones are more shiny. So if you look at them, it almost looks like they're bug-eyed when you, you check out the eyes on the, the counterfeit. Right, and to add to that would be the nose. The nose is, is uh, the same dull looking as the eyes, and the nose is slightly bigger. The nose and eyes are slightly bigger than the real uh, Authentic uh, Thai Beanie Babies. So that'd be kind of like features. We're covering features there. No different yes. things about the features. Um, a really key thing that a lot of people look for first, um, some of the counterfeits, you can't always go by the fabric. They look at the tags. Now this is a really good example of, of a bad swing tag. That is a bad tag. 
Really the, there's no it. gold foil on here. It's more just like a gold paint. Uh, the red is not printed into the fabric. It's more like a lacquer on there. It's, it's poorly cut. It's poorly printed. Uh, they need to check the information. Um, and, and also the tush tag. There's a lot of key factors in the tush tag that they can look for to identify, help identify it as a counterfeit. Checking the, all, the whole entire tag probably is it, important. Everything about it, the, the size, the, the another, color, the Another lettering. thing to add too, on certain Beanie Babies that are out here, you have um, the felt. There's a lot of felt on certain Beanie Babies out there. The, the tie felt is a very stiff type of a, a felt. Um, this is a grunt and his felt or his fangs here have a very thick felt for the fangs as well as, as the razorback. On the counterfeit, you'll, you'll see it's a very thin, flimsy type of a felt and it's a different color. It's very hard to match Ty's color, so there's always a, a, a slight variation in color. I see, so in getting educated, we need to know about features, we need to know about materials, and we need to know about tags. So we got features, materials, and tags. That's FMT, uh, FMT fakes mean trouble. That's great. Right. That, that works. Right. That's they important. Uh, and it is important to get educated. I think that we should go over some of these right now. What do you think? Sounds good. Does. Okay. I think we have some sitting over on that table right there, too. Well, first of all, let's look at some of the um, counterfeits on the market with the old face um, teal and violet. You'll notice that the eyes are a lot larger and duller as compared to the authentic Thai Beanie Baby. Also, the nose on the counterfeits are usually larger and set on top of the fabric. Let's look at some more obvious um, features here. When we look at the nip, the cat, the uh, authentic uh, Thai Beanie Baby is in the center. Let's look at the nose on the counterfeit. It is so large. Also, the eyes are a lot larger. And then there's also another nip and you'll notice the eyes as well. The features are totally different than the authentic Thai Beanie Baby. The nose also, which is salmon on the authentic Thai Beanie Baby, is larger and black. There are other um, differences that we can see on 1997 Teddy. The nose on the 1997 Teddy is flat and it's black. Also, the eyes are larger on this Beanie Baby as well. You notice a difference in um, colors of material here. This is uh, on the fake Beanie Baby, which is right here. The fabric is a lighter fabric color. Also, it, it, the difference of the fabric when you go against the, the fake Beanie Baby kind of tends to buckle up a little bit, and it, it's not as smooth and, and plush as the, the authentic Thai Beanie Baby. I think we're always looking at quality here, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, the, the better quality is the Thai Beanie Baby. Yes, it's have much higher quality and materials that he uses for his Beanie Babies. Now some of the other material differences would be, um, this is um, just it's the same type of fabric here, is you can see a shine and a shimmer on, on the, the authentic Beanie Baby. This is the authentic Beanie Baby. There's a nice shine and shimmer to it and it, again, as you go backwards and forwards, it's smooth. And on the fake Beanie Baby, when you go against it, you can see how it kind of ruffles up or bends up a little bit here, and it's just not smooth. It looks like a bad car seat. Yeah, <laughs> it does. That's right. <laughs> it does. <laughs> There's some other ones. We, this is a one that's very, very obvious when you look out uh, compared to a real uh, Beanie Baby. You, these are the righties. The fake righty here has very material. It's just every which way. It is not a smooth forward and backwards. It's uh, more of a marbly look to it. On the real Beanie Baby, it is very smooth, and it. It just goes back and forth. It is a, a very a big difference in uh, the materials here. It's it's almost like a deeper plush. It, there's just no real nap to it. There's no one direction that it lays. It's, it's just very furry looking. Right. Also, when you can see in the trunk here, you can actually see the differences in the fabrics. They're going every which way. There's a lot of um, different tones, gray tones in that one, as opposed to a solid gray in the um, authentic Beanie Baby. That's right. really easy to see. Can I see those for a minute? Sure can. You know, one thing, this is an unhappy beanie. <laughs> and this is a happy beanie. Thai beanie babies all seem to have a happy look to their face. And a lot of the counterfeits that you've been showing me here, I can see they just, they, just, they look sad. The quality is just not as good. Right. And, you know, Thai has always improved on his quality. And when you see the counterfeits, it's kind of sad because we want to keep our quality um, as high as any other uh, the products on the market. And like Hummels or or uh, Department 56, keeping it up with those different items. That's right. Exactly. Keep the high quality there, yes. Okay, we've covered uh, features. We covered material. 
How about tags? Tags. This is an example of an extremely bad tag. Uh, there's no gold foil on it. It's just a painted on gold. The uh, red is almost a lacquer paint on instead of actually into the fabric. Um, the inside printing is fairly poor. It's poorly done. Another ex uh, thing to look for on Beanie Babies tags is uh, the content of the tag. You can have, like on Peanut here, the tag looks good. You open it up. It says peanut and uh, style number, and it says uh, Waddle the penguin likes to dress up. Every night he wears his tux. Now that's that's not peanut's poem. Exactly. Uh, that has only occurred on the counterfeit tag. And another thing to look for is it's got the double spacing in the poem, which does not occur on a real tie t uh, beanie tag. And then here's a very very unique to this particular one. On the back here, where it should say surface wash, it has peanut's name. It says peanut. And again, on this tag, you can see that the poor foil, the bad foil, um, it's too wide, it's brassy looking, and the tag itself is oversized, which is why the end here is bent up, because it does not fit into the tag protector. It's a larger tag. Uh, what we are finding happening a lot, too, is that people on the older beanies that require a third generation tag, what they're doing is they're copying a pillow pal tag, which looks exactly like a third generation swing tag. It sure does. And But what they're forgetting to do, they'll, they'll copy the tag, but leave the same Pillow Pal style number on the back here. And they don't change it to, the, the Pillow Pals start with a, a 300 number. Oh, I see. So if it's important to check the back of the tag, check too. Check the back then. of the tag, Not make sure the that front. you have. Right. right. This is fun getting educated here. And then. I'm learning a lot. That's just swing tags. You've got to check your twitch tags, too. There's important things. Some are very, very obvious. Here we have a very, very obvious tush tag on Pinky. Oh. Uh, Pinky. Pin Kai. Pin Kai. He's from China. Yes, he is. <laughs> so his name is misspelled. And on the other side of the tag, there's also a problem with spacing and stuff. And uh, this particular tag is too wide. If we were to compare it against a regular tie tag, it would be marginally wider. So there's a lot of key features about the tush tag that you need to look for, too. That's great. Well, features materials and tags. Thanks. Fakes mean trouble. trouble. That's right, fakes mean trouble. We're gonna, we're gonna get to the other part of our program now and uh, move on to uh, going over all of Vicki's collection. And uh, I wanna thank the two Beckys at this point in time yes. for joining us for this part of the program. And I, I think I can speak, boy, I'm, I'm speaking for a lot of people here, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from all the Beanie Baby collectors in the world for everything you've done for Beanie Baby collecting. Thank you so much for being here thank today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're great welcome. Time. Thank you thank very you. much. Now Vicki and I are too. going to take you're off you're welcome. into a world of counterfeits and show people how to spot counterfeits. The Counterfeit 97 Teddy is lighter in fabric. It's a lighter color. The scarf is also a lighter color, but it has an additional problem in that it has ridges, ribbed material, because it's a lot cheaper material that they've used. The nose is flat compared to the authentic one, and it's a darker color, almost black. The eyes are not only larger, but if you were to look real closely under good light, they are duller. They're not as glossy. A common problem to the 97 Teddies is at the end of their hats, the palms, the fake ones are larger, less compact, less even and uniform in size. And then on this one, it has the oversized swing tag, which is also very common. If you were to take a, an authentic tie tag and place it over it, you would find that there's an overlapping space that's much larger. In this case, the gold is also wide and uneven on this one. The star. It's a darker yellow, which is also an extremely common problem. On the tush tags on these, on the authentic tush tag, most commonly it's a narrower tush tag, and the counterfeit tag has a wider tag. And then on the back side, where it says Oak Brook, Illinois, USA, there's no spacing on the fake tag. The real tag will have space between Oak Brook, Illinois, and USA.
The fake Bernie is slightly darker in fabric. It's not as nice a cream, soft cream color. If you look closely at the nose, it has a very major problem. It not only has the wrong size nose, but the wrong shape of nose. This particular one is missing a mouth, which is not necessarily an indication of counterfeit, but it's how poorly it was put together. And then if you look at the eyes on the counterfeit Bernie, not only is the pupil smaller and a larger uh, gold tone area on the outside, but it's a dull color. So it's a very dreary looking eye. Like once again, this one came without a swing tag, so there's nothing to determine on that. The tush tag is the wrong size, it's a little too wide, and it has the wrong name on it, it's Chip. This is Chili. Chili is a difficult beanie to determine the counterfeit from the real. The biggest factor is that it has the material that roughs up when you push against the nap and it gives you the wrinkles. Whereas you have the authentic chili, you can go either way against the nap and you don't have a problem with it. The tush tag on the counterfeit is a lot whiter, crisper, and clearer, which it would not normally be after three years of just sitting, even if it were just sitting in somebody's closet. The pellets inside the chili, the authentic chili, should be small little pellets, and in the counterfeit, they tend to be bigger and more noticeable as, as for size difference. One of the key features on the counterfeit chops is the nose. It's much bigger and rounded, almost looks like a little chunk of bubble gum sticking there. The mouth, look how far down it's sewed on. It's sewed on with a larger thread, and it's much lower down on the face. The eyes are more protrudent, and they're sort of a dull look. Once again, the swing tag is oversized, has the yellow star, and the really, really bad gold foil. In this case, the gold foil is chipping away. And the tush tag, again, the fake is too large a tush tag, and it has that Oak Brook, Illinois spacing error on it. And another key error that makes it real easy to tell the difference between the counterfeit is on the tush tag, it says handmade in China, and on the swing tag, it'll say handmade in Korea. Now there's, there's one other feature I forgot to mention that, that's kind of key to the counterfeit chops. If you look at his tail, his tail is sewn on sideways. It should be, incorrectly, it should be sewn on with the seams opposite each other and on the counterfeit, the seams match up. On ears, if you look at his whiskers here, his whiskers are shinier, different type of thread that it's sewn with. His tail is sewn on differently. Look how this is pouches, puckers in. He has uh, different stitching under his neck. If you look under his neck, you can see them here. They normally should be up close to the intersection point like they are on here. Uh, once again, he has the twish tag that is uh, too wide and does not have the spacing between uh, the lettering. The swing tag, besides having the, the odd foil and all that, has a pointed star. The points on the star are very, very pointed, which it does not have on the authentic tie tag. The authentic tie tag has the rounded points. Another little mistake on this particular ears is the lettering here is not the Comic Sans font, which is found on the inside of the fifth generation tag, which it should be. So the printing on the outside of the star is incorrect.
here we have two errands. The one in the center is noticeably different. His color is quite a bit lighter. He has a ribbon, which he's not supposed to have. Even if he were supposed to have a ribbon, the ribbon is too wide and single-faced as compared to authentic tie ribbons. His shamrock is unusual. The top leaf is only half there. There's a full heart on each side, but only half a heart on the top. He has no swing tag, and his tush tag is wide and pale colored. The other Aaron, although good in color, his fabric is not as plush. His eyes are bigger. The shamrock is tilted towards the center of the beanie, and the shamrock leaves are pointed at the ends. The swing tag star is also a darker yellow. The foil is flaky around the edges of the tag, and its twitch tag is also pale in color. This is Flash. On this one, besides being slightly underfilled in the pellets, it has the swing tag that has the larger, wider gold foil unevenly cut. On fleece, the most noticeable difference is the fabric. On fleece, it should have a nice defined nap, almost a diamond-shaped pattern. On the counterfeit, it's just sort of like a series of bumps and ridges. The nose on the counterfeit is also bigger, more rounded. The mouth, it uses a double-stranded thread versus the single, more petite strand of thread. And then a, a noticeable difference, if you can see it here, is it is sewn together with a tan thread rather than a, a white thread. Well, he happens to be one of my favorites, too, because he's my very first counterfeit. And uh, there's actually several things that are wrong with him. His nose is too small, his eyes are more protrudent, and they're dull. He has the same generic uh, bad swing tag. He's got stuffing in his arms. He's not supposed to have stuffing. He's supposed to just have pellets. He's sewn together with a peach-colored thread rather than a white thread. You can see it a little bit here. He should be sewn with a white thread. What I find very, very interesting about this one is that he's got the wrong verbiage in his swing tag. It says Garcia, and then it says Garcia style 4051, and then it says Spike the Rhino likes to stampede, which is obviously a counterfeit tag. And then another interesting feature about this one is that the poem is double spaced. None of the Thai poems are double spaced. On this tag, too, you can see where the red has bled through, a sign of the very thin material that was used. Another key feature that triggered that this was counterfeit is the tush tag. Garcia, besides having the wide tush tag in the Oak Brook, Illinois spacing problems, Garcia has the wrong date on his tush tag. He should say 1993, and on here, he says 1995. We have Goldie. He's larger and heavier overall than the authentic Thai Goldie. His eyes are larger. If you feel in the back of the eye, it has a very long pointed eye stem versus on the authentic Goldie. It also has the large bad foil swing tag and the larger wider tush tag. This grunt, although the fabric looks very, very nice and shiny, the felt is very thin. It's very weak feeling. If you were to feel the felt on the ears, the spikes, and the tusk. Additionally, there are other grunts that have been on the market that have a very, very bad swing tag. 
This one is different than the others in that it doesn't have any gold foil. It's just a painted on gold. This grunt, the style number on the swing tag on the inside, 4092, does not even match the style number on the back of the tag, 4002. Okay, with Happy, you need to be very careful because the, what I mainly find wrong with him is the swing tag. It has the, the foil thick and uneven and the printing is very low and faint on the inside. Here we have Inch. He has several problems. His uh, yarn antenna on the counterfeit are about half the thickness so that they droop down across his face. His body is poorly sewn such that the humps, there's no definition to the humps along his back. Uh, his eyes are larger. His uh, swing tag does look authentic, but his tush tag is rather pale looking. We have Jolly. Actually, this one should not be too hard to determine for anybody that knows their Beanie Babies. The counterfeit jolly is lighter in color. His mustache is obviously a lot darker. Instead of the golden brown, it's a darker brown. If you can see underneath all his fur, he has a much larger nose. The tusks are white versus a cream color. And again, he has the two wide tush tag and a poorly cut and uneven foil swing tag. This kiwi, the counterfeit kiwi, is about a quarter to a third smaller than the authentic kiwi. Its nose is actually a quite a bit smaller and fatter. The blue color is one of the most noticeable differences on him. It's a, a bright blue on his beak and on his feet. The color of yellow on his throat is paler than the original. The uh, belly on him, the red is lighter than the authentic. The eyes are duller. The swing tag is too large with a wide foil. The tush tag is also wider and paler and it has the incorrect spacing of the Oak Brook, Illinois phrase on its twish tag. We have Liberty here. Liberty has the bad fabric, whereas you push the back against it, it'll be rough. The ribbon actually is quite well done on this, as is the flag, but in this case, the ribbon is sewn attached actually to the beanie. And the nose is a slightly darker than the uh, authentic Liberty nose. This version counterfeit is uh, modeled after the beanie, not the B9 version of Liberty. Here we have Lizzie, this particular Lizzie. The head is shaped more diamond shaped rather than a nice round oval shape. It doesn't have any fingers or toes. The tail is a, a straight, straight line. It does not have the nice curvy wave to it. And then a feature here that it should be a dead giveaway for most people that look at it. It has a white belly. In addition to the white belly, it um, has a wrong name on the tush tag. It's called Spot. And then the felt for the tongue is a much thinner, finer felt than the thick felt used in the authentic Lizzie.
This is Magic. The biggest problem with Magic is that he's understuffed, but also, even though the fabric, the iridescent fabric looks really, really good, it's a very thin fabric. You can feel the thin, thinness if you just touch it. It's also understuffed in the wings. The points of the wings, it's a smaller wing. If you look at the no difference between the rows of stitching, the counterfeit has a lot shorter wing. The eyes are bigger. The tail is more pointed, less evenly curved. The twist tag has a very pale coloring to it. Here in Manny, uh, the counterfeit is a slightly different color. It's more brown in color. It should be a little bit lighter, actually matching uh, flash. It is stitched shut along the back of its body instead of along the right side of the body. The stitching on the tail or the fluke goes all the way up to the seam instead of only part way up. The twist tag is light and the swing tag has points on the stars. Okay, this is Maple. Maple is a Canadian exclusive. The thing to remember is that all Canadian Beanie Babies are required by law to have an extra tush tag on them. The Canadian tush tag, as you see here, which is written in French and English, a larger tush tag that hangs off right next to the original tie tag. On the counterfeit Maple, it does not have that second tush tag. The fabric is actually pretty good in this instance. The ribbon, however, is a little bit lighter. and It's too wide and it's sewn attached to the chin, which it is not on the authentic tie beanie. The star, additionally, is a little bit of a darker yellow. Now, Nook has a very bad swing take on here. The very obviously wide gold trim the point is star, and it's oversized, it's an extra size. Additionally, if you feel it, it has very flat feeling pellets in it. They're very flat. Here we have nip. There's, uh, on the counterfeit, there's actually two different version nips here. One has a nose that is too large uh, they both have black eyes instead of the two-tone eyes, but uh, one set of eyes is much larger than the other set. The yarn used for their whiskers is actually a thinner yarn than the authentic tie, and then the white fabric on the inside of the ears of the middle one is an off-white instead of a white plush. Here we have Peanut, another one of my favorites because he was the second counterfeit I ever acquired. This Peanut actually is, is smaller overall. He has a smaller head. He's a little bit grayer in color than the authentic Thai Beanie Baby. His ears are larger and more pointed at the end. He actually looks a little bit like Dumbo here. He has larger eyes. His swing tag is bad. It has the wide foil. It has additionally the wrong poem on his swing tag and his twist tag is too wide. On this peanut, other than the slightly darker in color and the larger eyes, he has peach colored ears.
This is Peking. He has the rough material. He's understuffed. And he's also a brighter white than he would be if he'd been an authentic beanie that's been around for three, four years. One of the key factors on him is if you feel the eye stem at the back of the eye, it's actually long and pointed, whereas on the authentic Peking, it's a very small stud. Additionally, on the swing tag, besides having the extra wide gold foil on the outside edge, the gold is too wide, the, encircles the TY lettering. It should be actually a very thin, narrow band. One more indication on the inside of the swing tag that you can key in on, Nuremberg should have uh, umlauts on it, and, and you do need to be careful because there are people that are trying to uh, actually hand print in the dots, but you can tell the difference under the magnifying glass. Here we have Pinky. It's pretty obvious that the center one is counterfeit. His fabric is uh, obviously red. The legs are too pale of pink. Uh, he has larger eyes. His legs are understuffed. There's absolutely no pellets in here. The tush tag is too wide, and additionally, it looks like it was almost sewn in as an afterthought. It's very poorly done. On the other Pinky, he also has the larger, more protruding eyes. He has the, a longer, darker colored beak. His tush tag is too wide and pale. His swing tag is too big. The foil, again, is too wide on that. But additionally, on his tush tag, he has a misspelling where his name is spelled Pinkai. With Pounce, his eyes are black instead of the two-tone gold color. His whiskers are pink instead of brown. And he has a wrong tush tag on him. His tush tag reads hippity. Here we have Prance. The main distinction is the eyes. If you look at the eyes, the actual prance should have the blue two-tone eyes. One of these has brown tone, and the other has just a, a solid black eye. And then there's a little bit of difference on the fabric. If you look on the bottom side, the real prance has a nice, distinct, solid line pattern, whereas the counterfeit prances are a fuzzier, less distinct material. Okay, on Princess, the main features to look for are the bad fabric. It's very, very flannel-like instead of plush. The ribbon is too wide. It's uh, about an eighth of an inch too wide, and it's only a single-sided satin. It's not a double-sided satin. And then it does have the, the pale tush tag, and then the lettering in the yellow star is the wrong font. It should be a Comic Sans font, and it's a different uh, type of font. Here we have quackers. The counterfeit quackers looks a little bit sad compared to the real one. His beak is more curved and pulled down on his body. The material is a, a slightly darker color. It also has a ribbed pattern to it. His eyes are more protrudent, a little bit larger. And then he has some problems on his swing tag. The date of birth on the swing tag is wrong. The information for Thai Inc. is incorrect, as well as the information for the website.
With radar, he has a bad flannel-like material. He is also oversized compared to the authentic radar. His tush tag is pale. His feet and hands are quite poorly cut. They're kind of squared off. And his body is sewn wrong. The body seam does not meet up with the seam that goes around the edge of, the, of his wings. Here we have Righty. Righty has one of the more obvious fabric faults of the counterfeits. His fabric is a lot uh, fuzzier, shaggier. He looks a little bit like a shag rug here. He's a little darker color gray. His eyes are more protrudent, a little bit larger. He, uh, his other fault is that he does have the bad swing and the bad tush tags. This is seaweed. Seaweed has a bad tag with the wide gold foil on him. This is Smoochie. He has been actually confiscated a few times by customs agents uh, doing counterfeit raids at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. He has a very bad swing tag with an uneven foil and his twitch tag is too wide. Snort here has an example of an extremely bad tag with a very, very thick, wide gold foil, and uh, it's oversized. It's larger than a standard tie tag. Okay, Snowball. The obvious difference that first comes to your eye, it has green fringe. Additionally, if the green fringe is not clue enough, the scarf is a lighter color, it's a ribbed fabric, the noses are different in color, the felt on the hat, you can see how this collapses in more, the felt is a thinner felt. The buttons, the buttons should be a dull color. On the counterfeit, they're a glossy color. Additionally, the counterfeit has the bad wide swing tag and the bad wide tush tag. We have Splash. In addition to the rough fabric that Splash has, his dorsal fin is sewn on incorrectly. He has larger, duller eyes. His fluke is sewn shut so that no pellets or material can pass down into it. And he has the, the larger, wider, um, off-center swing tag and the larger twish tag. This is Spooky. He has the ribbon problem where it's too wide. It's a brighter color. You can see that it's not a double-sided satin. Additionally, the fabric is the same bad fabric. The felt mouth is a different color felt. It's a darker felt. The thread on the mouth is a double thickness. It's a lot wider thread. And additionally, it has the bad swing tag and the extra wide tush tag. This is spotless spot on the counterfeit. The fabric is rougher. If you look at his nose, his nose is a lot wider and thicker. The eyes are more protrudent. 
and are uh, dull looking. On the swing tag, again, it has the too wide of a, a gold edging around the TY. And the tush tag is very crisp and white as compared to the older one. Uh, an important thing to remember is that it's very unlikely that you're going to find a, a spotless spot in pristine condition without any stains or wear and tear on it, especially considering that it's four years old. Teddy. He has the same problem with the ribbon. The ribbon is too wide. It is single-faced satin. It is a darker burgundy. And it is not sewn shut. The tush tag is also slightly wider. The swing tag has the uneven and wide foil on it. Here we have Old Face Teal. On this one, he has the particularly bad fabric again. His nose is bigger. It's a glossy instead of the, a dull sheen to the nose. The eyes are bigger, and they are dull versus the, the glossy that they should be. Um, there are also some problems with the swing tag. On the inside of the swing tag is missing a dot after the phrase tie ink and then it's also missing a dot after the surface wash. Uh, these tiny little distinctions in the punctuation are very important because these tags and these beanies are very authentic looking and it's one of the few things that you can look at to determine whether you have a counterfeit or a real. On the Old Face Violet Teddy, it has the wrong size nose. It's a glossy nose instead of a dull finish. The eyes are larger and have a dull finish instead of the glossy finish. The fabric, again, is extremely poor on it. The swing tag, they have corrected the mistakes from the earlier version, the very first counterfeit ones that came out, and they have added the dots after tie ink and surface wash. On twigs, the swing tag is again too big with the bad foil. The star has the pointed ends, but in this case, the tush tag is slightly smaller, a little bit narrower than the authentic tie tush. Valentino, it has a ribbon problem. The ribbon is too wide and it's a brighter color red as compared to the original. It's also a single sided satin. It should be shiny on both sides. It's only shiny on one side. The nose is too light. It's also flat instead of rounded. It has the too large of a swing tag. The tush tag is also too wide. It has an additional problem that Valentino should have a 1993 date on its tush tag, and the counterfeit has a 1995 date on its tush tag. Here we have waves. Waves' material is a lot more flannel-like. It's not as plush. The fluke is a lot wider, filled with a lot more pellets. It has the eyes, if you look, are a little bit duller, not quite as glossy. It has the oversized bad swing tag.
here we have wrinkles. His fabric is rough. He is oversized. He's very, very solid with uh, filling and very few pellets on him. His ears are actually pointed rather than rounded. Under his chin, the stitching is far back at the throat instead of halfway up under his eyes to define his features. Uh, the wrinkles above his eyebrows are very, very distinct rows versus on the uh, authentic tie. They just make, uh, look like loose folds on him. Uh, the twish tag again is slightly too wide and the swing tag has the pointed star on him. On Ziggy, Ziggy has two different patterns to his fabric. The old fabric, which has the narrow lines, and the newer fabric, which has the fatter lines. On the counterfeit, it has a mix of both. On its back, it has the fat lines for the new fabric. On its stomach, it has the thin lines from the older fabric. Additionally, the ears are sewn on too far back on the head. The tail is not cut properly. And the swing tag, in addition to being large and oversized, has the wrong print on the front to match the Comic Sans printing on the inside. There are a variety of different types of uh, pellets that can be found in counterfeit Beanie Babies. I've opened up a few here to show you to give an example. These came from counterfeit Aaron. They're more cylindrical. They're flat on top and bottom and round. They're smaller. These came from a 97 Teddy. They're a mixture of all different types of pellets. There's a small pellets. There's a, a flat translucent pellet. There's a cylindrical, it's just a big mix, and you can actually feel the difference as you play with the, the Beanie Baby. These came from a counterfeit in a nook. The pellets, as you can see, are all just are flat and translucent. Now these are as compared to the current larger size pellet and the smaller pellets that are found in the original Beanie Baby. So you have several different types of counterfeits compared to the current and the old original tie pellets. That was a great lesson, Vicki. I learned a lot. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And the good news is, if you paid attention, you learned how to spot counterfeits. Let's go over and recap a little of the important information. Okay. Features, materials, and tags. How do we remember that? Fakes, Fakes mean, mean trouble. trouble. Use this knowledge. And use your guide that you received with this video. What else? Keep up to date, keep yourself informed, take advantage of magazines, newsletters, websites. Another thing to keep in mind is always deal with a reputable dealer, somebody that will guarantee their product, that will give you your money back if you're not satisfied with your beanie baby. That's right. And report bad beanies. The Thai hotline is 1-888-317-5488. This is important. Stay in control, another thing to remember. You get excited when you're collecting Beanie Babies, and sometimes, even though the story sounds too good to be true, you want the beanie so bad, you buy it anyway. Remember the information you learned today. And what is the most important thing? Have, Have fun, fun collecting, collecting Beanie, beanie Babies. babies.